Hi everybody, welcome to the video and welcome to Goodwill. Here we are in the purse section to start things off. Um, still more remodeling and everything happening here at this Goodwill. I stopped by today, um, chit-chatting with the uh, manager too as well. And they are still almost done. <laughs> and as you can see, they're putting in some... Uh, we're on that back wall. They're going to put in some more changing rooms. Hopefully to sell more clothes. That's their goal. Sell more clothes. We're not really into clothes. And we're not going to source any clothes today. But. We are definitely taking a look at some purses. I am starting. Like I've been saying in the last few videos. I'm going to start getting away from purses just a little bit. Doesn't mean I'm not going to buy purses. It just means I'm not going to. Uh, zero in on it right when I come into the uh, into the Goodwill. Except here, this one here, just because the glass case is... As soon as you walk in, you go straight to the back wall. That's where the glass case is. And generally, I like to take a look in there really quick before I start my... Um, uh, another reseller there. Uh, before I start my uh, walkthrough towards the hard goods. And before, I didn't have to you know walk... I didn't really have to walk through the clothing to see the to see the um, the glass case, but this time I got to go to the glass case and I go walk along the back wall, which is where the purses happen to be. So I probably will continually keep, you know, going down the purses purse aisle when I um when I am at this Goodwill, just because um, that'll be my quickest route to get to the hard goods section. So I spotted. Uh, Right here in the toy section. I don't. Hmm, not really sure why I even picked that up. Don't remember. But this candle is a Bath and Body Works. It is brand new. It is. Uh, I forgot what the scent was called. I think it was called Power. Kind of had like a more of a um, uh, like a cologne smell to it. Not my not my type of candle, but. Those Bath Body Work candles, those larger ones, are definitely a great pickup for the price, for the right price. Now we're getting over to the electronics section. I generally always kind of start in the electronics section as well in this one once I get to the hard goods section. And I'm probably going to put this in the, in the cart. Yeah, I'm definitely going to put this in the cart. It's just a vintage electric carving knife. I'm going to definitely look this up. No good keyboards. I do like keyboards. Um, you guys know I like keyboards. And I'm always on a mission to try to find keyboards to resell. So I don't really pay a heavy attention to the appliances. Just because I don't really like dealing with them. I don't like testing them. Um, there's usually multiple parts, components. And... The weight, the boxes that you would need for it when you're shipping it out. You use up a lot of packaging material. I mean, I've shipped out appliances and you end up using a lot of packaging material to get it out. And you kind of have to decide, you know, is it worth shipping this out? I mean, it's really, I mean, the only appliance, I mean, usually I'm looking right around $100 to make at least $100 on an appliance if I buy it. Maybe a little bit less, depending on what it is, if it's already, um... <clears throat> Excuse me. If it's already been, um, if it's already boxed up and everything, I might just do it. And I have done it. Um, I recently sold a, um, like a baby food maker, like a blender, combo blender. It was basically like a, like a bullet blender thing, just on a little bit of a larger scale. And it was already boxed up in the box. It was new, but open box. And so I was able to just to put that into another box to ship it out. Piece of cake. Because it was already in the box. I don't know about the ones that are loose. I don't know. Not my thing, really. Not really my thing. Unless there's big profit in it. But I usually just kind of scan it really quick and then continue on walking by. Here we go. We're going into the toy section. It is clear, so I'm getting in there. I wanted to kind of... Usually I'll walk through the toy section, then cut over the electronics, but it was pretty packed. 
Yeah, I saw this Jurassic Park plush, but mm, don't think it was really worth it. Probably kind of modern, I think. It was all had hair and stuff on it, and I, I really don't. Oh, you know what? I'm just realizing there's a. Uh, now that I'm rewatching the video. I just saw a uh, Earth plush, which I bought and sold those before, right around twenty dollars or so for those World uh, Planet plush. I forget what the name of the brand was, but I sold them all, all of mine off already. Um, I found the whole uh, the whole solar system, the whole planets, all the planets in our solar system there at this Goodwill. Nothing there. No. See, these, the, I don't know, both these women were in this aisle earlier, then they left, and so I was like, all right, it's all clear. Now they're back again. Oh, I thought they already went through all this stuff. I mean, I definitely go up and down aisles. Don't, don't get me wrong. I go up and down aisles multiple times. Uh, but... I try to attack aisles that are clear, free from people, but sometimes, you know, there's, there's no, there's no help in it. You have to, there's people there, there's a bunch of people. Legos, Legos, nothing good in there. Looking out for mi minifigures. When you're looking for Legos, look for the minifigures, unless it's a brand new set. Um, the minifigures are really where the value is at. Look and see if there's any brand new toys, anything new in the box that might be good. Uh, as far as like uh, good loose figures or loose toys around here, I usually don't find too much here. Uh, I mean, I've said this before, I usually don't find too much when it comes to uh, loose toys at Goodwills here in my area. Sometimes I do. Sometimes I do find a great, you know, a great deal, but um, pretty rare, pretty rare. Mickey Mouse. I thought about it, but it didn't really look look kind of cheap. Like maybe like an Amazon knockoff kind of thing. I know it said Disney on the back, but I don't. I'm definitely. Gonna, I'm gonna look it up. Definitely gonna look it up. Doesn't hurt. Just look it up. But it just didn't didn't look it didn't have look like it was good quality. Little time piece with a like a almost reminded me of Back to the Future, you know, the, the original Back to the Future, the clock tower. That's what that reminded me of. Now, they do put a lot of Target stuff over here on this side. Um, they are starting to do that again, put more of their Target items over here, but nothing really. Those giant Nerf things, mm. the boxes are huge and. Kind of more trouble than it's worth. Plus, I got a Vero on, on a on a um, a Nerf item, so I'm not I'm not doing Nerf. So far, I'm not doing Nerf, and I'm doing Peloton. Oh, and I got a a, a not a Vero, but a um, what was it? It was a uh, it was that game, Cards Against Humanity. You, I think it was in a video. There were sold comps on it. But I got a counterfeit strike, or not a strike, but a counterfeit warning on it. I'm like, counterfeit, what the? I don't know. I don't know. I feel like it's a probably, I mean, it's probably associated with their Vero program as well. But I'm not sure why. I mean, there were other solds, there were other listed. But then again, you know, there's some people that get caught and some people that don't, so... Maybe it is counterfeit. And none of the other people that I saw on there have been caught yet. Mine was caught. Look at the clear glass. I'm hoping there's something in the clear glass. <laughs> Going down both sides of the clear glass here. Uh, that was kind of nothing. Although I just get got a nice set of mason jars like that. They were Libby glass. Uh, I forget what the country was. It was called country. Um, oh, no, no. County Fair. 
County Fair uh, drinking jar. They look just like that. They're by Libby. Uh, not a, you know, not huge as far as value wise, but good quality drinking glasses. I really like. I really like the uh, the mason jar. Uh, drinking out of the mason jar. Plus, you can buy mason jars really cheap. I mean, you don't have to buy the Libby ones. You can get the ones like from Target or something. I thought these might have been something. Oh, this guy. <laughs> This guy was popping in here. He was uh, asking me about the camera and like, oh, I never seen. Uh, he was saying I never, I never saw anybody that uh, that records here in Goodwill or you know, out and about. So I'm checking out these little uh, um, T light holders. They said Homeco on them, and Homeco. I do sell some Homeco stuff. Um, what I have uh, found from Homeco that does sell really well are like the plastic uh, kind of wall decor items. I think the most recent thing I picked up were like uh, wall sconces. They kind of hold a candle, and I'm pretty sure that I think it was the last Homeco. And they do the Homeco does really well. Uh, as far as Homeco glass, I've never picked up Homeco glass before. So just kind of chit chatting with a guy a little bit. He was. Um, inquiring about the camera and I was telling him I do YouTube how much it was kind of caught me off guard a little bit so kind I don't know if I was uh I don't know you, you know when I when I'm at when I'm outsourcing I'm kind of just you know I'm I'm focused and when if you're trying to converse with me it's it's a little bit <laughs> Especially when you catch me off guard, it's kind of like, uh, 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 what am I? I don't know. <laughs> so, I'm not a good sourcing companion. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> when I'm on the hunt. I'm on the hunt. Yeah, these Homeco things. Eh, I think I might pick them up. Uh, well, I'm gonna put them in the cart. Ultimately, we'll look them up and we'll see here. I mean, you'll see me look some stuff up here, but those are, are those are will eventually go back onto the shelf. They weren't they weren't worth it. There's some glass plates here. They're old, older glass. Um, wasn't cut glass. It was a pressed glass. Didn't really see any maker mark on it or anything. So I was like, eh. That was probably just a piece from TJ uh, TJ Maxx or something. A lot of this like decorative glassware comes from TJ Maxx. Not that it's necessarily bad. It's just um not worth it to resell. I mean, the far the profit goes, and they tend to be priced at a at a point where you you can't make that good of a profit on it. Uh, once you start equating into, because when when you're shipping out glass, you got to make sure you have a good box. You can't be shipping out in you know a cheap little flimsy box. Um, you got to have a good quality box when you're shipping out glass. Got to make sure it's packaged well. Um, usually, I do. You've seen. I mean, I've seen some of my videos before. I'll do like a like a quad wrap and bubble wrap. I fold my bubble wrap over and I wrap it twice, so it's like four times wrapped. And then um, then there'll be packaging material. I use paper. And that does really well. You can use peanuts. You can use um, what a foam. Uh, you can get those. Yeah, everything adds. Everything then start the cost of all those things start adding up. So if I'm gonna purchase a glass piece for about five, six, seven, eight dollars or so here, and then try to resell it for about twenty to twenty-five, which is about what most good decorative glass pieces go for. You know, you're talking about another two, maybe three dollars, depending on the size of the glass. Maybe four dollars in shipping supplies. Then make sure to to um, also you know think of your eBay fees, and if you do promoted listings, so it all adds up. This is a Cavassier uh, um, decanter. Not sure if the stopper actually went to it or not. But I was gonna look it up and just see if um what it this little potted thing was really nicely done. Really nicely. Terracotta. 
a uh, really nice little votive holder or um, little tiny like succulent pot. This Cavassier glass, um, the Cavassier is a uh, type of uh, drink, adult beverage. Uh, look at this plate right here. This plate was pretty cool. Uh, Texas Longhorn. And I looked this one up. It was only $2.19. Goes for about 15 maybe 20 I might be able to stretch out 20 We'll see. Uh, don't usually pick up plates. And I think I tell you guys every time I walk down the plate aisle, I don't pick up plates. But to turn two fifteen, let let's say two fifty into about 15 maybe $20. That's yeah. You know, I'll I'll do that. I'll take that deal. If it was like a five dollar plate, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have done it. Uh, but because it was two two dollars nineteen cents, we'll take that. So there's like something similar there. There it is, right there. There's the comps. Fourteen ninety nine a pop. But the um the can't the glass wasn't really. It was just regular glass with, uh, you know, the brand etched into it. So, as you can see, there's other, you know, decanters out there. But I'm not really seeing that one, and they don't really seem to go for too much. Maybe about 20 bucks, and uh, just because I'm not sure if the actual stopper goes with it or not, I'm gonna. That's not coming home with us. Not sure what the actual price was on that. Definitely here. Take a look at the mugs. See if there's anything cool. Any uh, nice stoneware mug, but not very, not valuable. Generally, your pottery, you know, your more handmade mugs, uh, stoneware, terracotta mugs. Uh, generally, it'll be about. No, probably about ten dollars what they would sell for. But then again, it might be like a long term sale. It might be something you put out there and then make ten dollars four, five, six depends what the subject matter is. Five, six, seven dollars. You're gonna wait that long for five, six, seven dollars? Yeah, looking at these a uh, couple of decorative pieces up here. Let's see what they are. Checking out the end caps. Here's the blue end cap. Bluish. With some clear. <laughs> Another one of those. Was this the Homeco one or a different? This was. I remember seeing this one over there. With the other clear glass. But we're going to leave that behind. Those. I mean. It, in general, those little tea light holders aren't super valuable. Check out the glass. I was thinking this might have been a cut. Pretty sure this was a cut glass piece. This looked like it. the pattern might have matched it. But this is more like a... I, I believe this is probably a creamer. A creamer cut. And I'm definitely thinking about it. Not sure. This little glass piece, we're going to pick it up. It, it's pretty cool. It's hand-blown, polished bottom. Um, nice little piece. This, this will be for, for us, um, for my daughter's room. Just a cool little, little vase. But I'm still tossing around the idea of maybe picking this up. We're going to just quickly scan it. Oh, I'm just going to scan that. <laughs> I was going to see if that was worth anything. I pop it in the car, but then my wife decides to uh, just keep it and we'll uh, put it in my daughter's room. She likes blue. As you can see, my phone, my touch thing wasn't really... I don't know what's going on there. But I scan it first, and then usually I'll look for an eBay listing that has it, you know, in there. Because they'll give you all kinds. They'll give you uh, from Etsy to Poshmark, wherever. 
But you really want the ones that have, you know, that are associated with eBay. Then once you click on the little eBay thing, it'll take you to the listing, then copy the title from there and paste that into the actual search. So that way I can start to look at sold comps. That's the way to, to kind of work the Google image to find what you're actually looking for. Uh, let me see. I'm going to take a look at this guy right here. Yeah, I'm not really seeing. I mean, the Google image came up with this one. I think that's pretty similar to it, but last sold was 13. So we're going to leave it on the shelf. But then I do put that blue thing back initially, but we do end up taking it home. See, I don't know why it picks it up. <laughs> See, she wants to keep it. But we're in the business of reselling, not keeping stuff. You see, some of the things that, you know, you pick up, you, you end up picking up stuff. You end up picking up stuff that you like. So, in reality, I'm not really, you know, even though I sell all kinds of stuff. She's showing me these little shot glasses. I forgot what the name of them. I'll have to, you know, get that in the recap. But um, she said they, she looked them up and they go for pretty good money. You know, while I sell in multiple um, categories, people will say, oh, you're an everything seller. You sell everything. You sell anything and everything. Well, not really. You know, I don't. I tell you guys I don't like clothes. I'm not really much of a clothing side. I do have clothes for sale, yes. But I'm not that, you know, I'm not out there sourcing uh, clothes all the time. I don't really go for appliances. I don't really, you know, I don't like to ship them. I don't like to test them. So, and then, you know, you just tend to gravitate towards what you like, what appeals to you. Then you start looking it up. Is what appeals, what appeals to me, does it appeal to other people and are they willing to pay for it? So, that's the thought process here that, you know, I'm... You know, that's, it's not really that I'm, it's something that I'm actively thinking about, but it's already been, you know, pre-programmed into my brain. <laughs> so when I'm out here, I'm looking for stuff that appeals to me and then hoping that it appeals to other people that are on eBay wanting to pay for it. And the other thing too, you know, I'm looking at the price. I'm also considering, you know, if I buy this and if I buy it for the right price, can I offer, you know, what price am I paying for it? And can I offer a deal? I'm trying this little head talk to my wife. I know she, she would like that, uh, but we ended up passing on it. I was going to look it up really quick, but am, am I, am I buying something? Let's say I buy the hedgehog. You know, what's, what are the comps on it? I don't know. I, it doesn't really go for that. Maybe, I don't think I find any sold comps on it, but let's just say, let's just say for the sake of the conversation, it goes for about $15. Um, and maybe I buy it for two. How low am I willing to go on that item? Can, if somebody out there, how can I make it appealing to somebody? Because, you know, when you're on eBay, you're sending, you send out offers or people are shooting you offers or people are shooting you messages asking you, hey, would you take this much for it? So I'm already thinking ahead of time when I'm buying these items, can I offer someone a deal if they're asking me for a deal or if they send me an offer on this item? Can What's the lowest I'm going to go is already what I'm processing and thinking about when I'm trying to buy these items. So that way I can get them moved. Get them moved, get them on their way. Get them to their next destination. But here we are checking out this Mickey thing, and hmm, I'm not going to keep it. 
in the I'm not gonna keep it in the cart. We're gonna pass on that guy. And then the next thing I'm looking at, I think I'm looking at that general electric uh no no no, I'm looking at the candle. There's the comps of the candle right there. Look at that. About twenty five to thirty dollars on that candle. And the candle is, I mean, it's a little high, $7.59, you know, but hopefully we'll get around 25 bucks for it. Not bad. I wish it was a little cheaper, but God, sometimes you got to take what Goodwill is giving us or wherever you're sourcing at. I'm going to check out this uh, General Electric knife. That one definitely isn't worth it. I don't know. About 20 bucks, 15 and 20 bucks on that guy. Don't think it was used before. Um, but it was, it cost too much. See right there, you see the price right there. They want $15, they probably will go for about 20. So that's definitely a leave behind. And here we are, in the shoes. We're looking at the shoes, taking to see if there's anything good in there. I'm not going to pick up any shoes today, but. Um, so, if you guys see any nice shoes here, then I'm passing up. Well, I am slowing down shoe buying. I mean, slowing it down a lot. I will still pick up some something cool, something profitable. I'll still keep my eye out for, you know, the popular brands right now. Hoka's and On Clouds are pretty trendy. Um, Nikes, of course, although Nikes are kind of, the, the resale value on Nikes is, is going down, but there's still some good ones out there. I was going to check out this one here. Doesn't appear to be worth it, especially for the condition that it's in as well, too. And I don't really want to do too much cleaning when it comes to shoes. It takes a lot of time and effort that I'd rather devote to making videos or um, listing. That's a pretty popular colorway of Hoka. Um, it, it was just too much tread was gone. You said coach on them, but they probably are legit. But I'm not really 100% uh, comfortable... Uh, knowing what's authentic, you know, designer shoe and what isn't. Not really my my wheelhouse, so definitely gonna look them up really quick, see if it's even worth it. Typically, the designer shoe like Coach and Louis Vuitton shoes, they really don't go for that much. I mean, their purses and everything, their more accessories go for quite a bit, but when it comes to the shoes, the resale on them is it really that great. And we're coming to the end of summer. These are more summertime shoes. Uh, of course, depending upon what you know, part of the country you live on, what part of the world you live on. Um, not too, too much in the cart. A little, you know, kind of an interesting cart. Some glassware in there. Candle. I think my wife has those shot glasses. We are kind of... Um, Kind of just hanging out over here because they didn't have any carts out when we first came in, which they usually do. And we hear activity in the back and we hear carts moving around in the back. So we're kind of hoping, waiting for them to roll something out. Gonna take a look at this Starbucks mug, just see. Generally, these ones with the with the you know the scales on it tend to have a little bit more value than others. They kind of got that antique bronze look to it. That one didn't appear. That one wasn't um very valuable. These mugs uh or tumblers or insulated cups, Contigo are pretty good. I mean, they have good value. Um, they're pretty expensive in stores as well too. I have a couple already. I see this one here that's brand new. I think they wanted ten dollars, and then I'm gonna find another one, which actually I think I might keep for myself. It was a taller one as well. 
Uh, what do we find? I don't know, maybe I don't find it here. These things are really good. The thing I just picked up, it's um charcoal chimney. And really amazing. If you're into grilling outdoors, those things get your coals raging hot and fast too. You don't really don't need you don't need any um I shouldn't say you really don't, but you don't need uh, lighter fluid or anything. Usually just stuff a bunch of paper on the bottom. That's what I do. Um, I like using uh, lump charcoal. I don't really use uh, briquettes. Unless I'm at a pinch, and sometimes I'll have briquettes. Um, but I like using like lump charcoal. And I just throw it all in there in that chimney. Shove a bunch of newspaper underneath it. And light it up. And in about... 10 minutes, you have coals ready to go, and it gets raging hot. It, it's like, it's crazy how hot that it, the little, those little chimneys, you know, get the coals. I mean, I've seen people cook right over the chimney, too. You know, you get a little, uh, you know, get a little grate. Um, especially if you just want to get a good sear on something. Oh, man, it's amazing. But, great device if you're into grilling. Uh, with uh, charcoal. So we're still... Lump charcoal. Not, I think I said lump coal. I think it's the same thing. Um, this looks like it belonged to something. Like it belonged to a top or something. Like they, it went to something. Um, I'm going to look up the name because it has the br a brand name on the clock itself. And I see other ones here. Not really that great. Like five bucks if you find like those little, just the little desk ones. This one looks like it went to something though. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to mess with that. This little sleep bag. My wife says we should be buying it. I haven't comped it out yet, but I'll definitely go over in the recap. Um, or maybe I do look it up. <laughs> I don't know. I totally forgot what I did. So great that I have a video of the evidence of what I did. <laughs> um, because I'm doing this voiceover a few days later, so. I'm going to check out this little baby. Sometimes it's just quicker to just do voice chat, uh, voice type. Oh yeah, I jumped over to that little bowl thing really quick. She wanted me to look that up. Yeah, I don't know. there's no sold comps on it. There were some listed, but no solds. So we're definitely going to leave that behind. Uh, I've got a few things. I don't think you guys saw me pick up. Or I, did, I didn't record. Um, there was like an anthropology bowl. Which does pretty well. There it is right there. There's the comps on it. There's the bowl right there. This is made in Japan too, which was a little bit different. Usually it's made in um, China. Got this Pikachu. This was inside a bin. A, a bin. Uh, so a bin came out. And so once the bin came out, everybody started attacking it. Because there was no bins. There was a little Pikachu, which is like 15 maybe $20. And I grabbed those baseballs. There was a Disney baseball in there. Softball. And vintage, I couldn't really find any comps on it, but the bag was like, I think the bag was $4.19, I believe. So, I'm going to take it, take a chance on it. Uh, it's Disney, and I'll at least make my money back, if anything. So, as you can see, the bin's still out here, we're just going to... There's a bin and a cart over there, closer to the door. But nothing really that great. I mean, every, I think everybody was waiting for these things to come out. For some new items to come out. Because the shelves weren't looking too great. But then, you know, we do have a good mixture of items here. Um, they're going to go into different categories on eBay. Definitely, today was a, you know a day for some glassware. 
nothing. Oh, this guy right here. Yeah, this one is a uh, outdoor. Uh, it says on the box, outdoor sprinkler controller. So even for parts, this was going for pretty good money. I think it was right around fifty or sixty. It looked like it hadn't even been used. The original screws were still in the little uh, plastic baggie in this thing. So you want to take a look? I mean, there's no. It, I'm guessing the wrapping on this was probably already taken off. It might have had like a little peel, plastic peel on it. It might have been in a bag. I'm not sure. But it doesn't look like it's ever been used. So here, go, here we go. We're going to look up the comps on this guy here. You know, very easy to look up. I mean, it has the name on it and everything. And you see some of the comps here. Some of them listed pre-owned for about $100. And then... You know, maybe just for parts. And about 50 bucks or so. 40 or some for 12 25 36 so we're gonna give this a try. Six dollars and fifty nine cents. So even if it's parts, probably about forty bucks, just to sell it for parts. But it doesn't even. I mean, I'm telling you, it doesn't look like it's been used at all. So there's the power adapter and everything for it. Just checking everything out, making sure we're all good. But I don't know. I'll probably look up to see. Try to find if it, you know, how it's originally packaged. Is it just put in in the brand new package just like this? I wanted to open it up just to look at it. Make sure nothing was broken on the inside. Because, you know, that's the last thing you want. Take an item home. You start examining it a little bit and it's broken. Like, oh. And technically there's no returns at our, technically I should say there's no returns at our goodwill. So, at our goodwills. No returns on anything. But, but. There are exceptions to every rule, and, you know, if you get to know people there, you're nice, you know, I have been able to get returns at Goodwill. Just got to be nice about it. But that's going to be the big score of this trip. Then we're going to check out the jewelry. I'm in, I was in the glass. I find these knives. Interesting knives. I mean, I'll do some more research on them and see exactly what they are. And this right here, Twice Candy Bong Z? I don't know. It's a K-pop thing. <laughs> I don't know what K-pop is. Why? Well, I know what K-pop is. I'm not into K-pop, and I had no clue exactly. I had no clue that was a part of K-pop. K-pop. I had to look it up. And apparently it goes for about six between 60 to $80. But here comes a recap, everyone. Okay, everybody, welcome to the recap. These are the items here that we're going to be reselling. Um, some pretty cool stuff and some stuff I still need to do some more research on, like these knives right here. I, these knives, I'm not sure. They were just really cool dinner knives, butter knives. Um, those are some keywords you can use, dinner and or butter knife for these. I mean, they're only $4.39. At first, I was thinking maybe they fold, <laughs> Just with because of that little design there, but I still got to do some more look up on this, and we'll see where this ends up, you know, landing. I'll probably uh, drop a short on it or something here for that. But what we can confirm first is that these brand new go for about $25, right around $25 on eBay. $22, $23, $24, 25 We paid $10, we paid 10 a little bit high. Profit margin will be a little bit lower than what I would like, but it's brand new. There's nothing I have to do to it except li picture it, list it, pictures list, throw in a box, and then wait for it to sell. But it's a good brand. It has great sell-through rate. Here's the taller one, which we're actually going to keep this one here. Um, these are great insulated water bottles. If you guys, you know, are looking in the you know in the market for a water bottle for a coffee insulated coffee travel coffee cup. These, this brand is really good. I mean, it generally goes for like, I think it was like 20 to $25 at Target. So, and again, you know, just a great brand. Um, I would recommend these. Next, we got the Pikachu. Of course, it's uh, Pokemon, Don't, not stuff in the back. It's listing stuff I'm working on still. But the Pikachu is one we picked up. And, you know, not a bad price. What did we get it for? Four, 
five dollars and twenty five cents. Not bad for a um, uh, for a uh, Pokemon character, especially because it was brand new with the tag. That's very important right there. So about fifteen to twenty dollars on that guy. Again, he's brand new with the tags. Easy to list. Easy to to picture, and I'm gonna throw pictures in there too because that's easy to picture, easy to list. And then um, the other, the other the big item here was this. This is a cape. It's a it's a light. Um, I guess instead of a lighter, uh, you remember he used to hold up lighters at concerts and stuff. This is like just a light wand. It has an attachment for the battery on the bottom, but just a light up wand. That you would hold at a concerts, so it's a apparently twice is a is a um, the name of an artist or the and the maker of this or I think it's an artist. But thankfully, eBay was able to tell me that this is pretty valuable and should go for about sixty between sixty to eighty dollars. So that's pretty good. I mean, we paid up for it. We definitely paid up for it. I don't have the tag on there anymore because I did list it already, but I think it was $27. But $27 to make potentially $50? Bucks? Well, a little bit less with fees and stuff, but we'll see. We'll see how that goes. Um, hasn't sold yet. <laughs> it's listed for a few days now. This is the candle here, uh, Bath and Body Works. It's a three, three wick candle. Uh, whew, that scent is strong. <laughs> Paid up a little bit for this. I don't. We don't usually pay this much for the candles, but um, should still be a strong seller there. Um, Onyx, Power Onyx scented candle. Be on the lookout for these. People love these candles. We keep a whole stash of these candles. Um, brand new. Still hasn't been used. Make sure they're brand new. Don't know really much about selling used candles, but I don't dabble in it. But I have seen people buy and sell used candles. Really depends on the scent. Two nineteen for this bag of yeah, it's a couple of baseballs and a softball in there, and let's cut this open with something. I don't know where my scissors are at. Oh, they're over here. Oh, there they are. Let me grab my scissors really quick. You'll get a quick shot of the mess that is the garage, listing area, everything area, workspace, video editing. <laughs> um. If you are looking into getting to YouTube, definitely consider upgrading your computer, which I had to do to get these videos out in a timely manner. Okay. Now, some of these, this, not worth it. The other baseballs in here, unless they have all, unless they're autographed. No. The other baseball in here. That's nothing. Okay. The one we really want is, the one we really want Come on. This is Mickey Mouse one that was mixed up with all these. This is a softball. Okay. Ah, there we go. I messed up now. Okay. Okay, we'll get rid of those. But this was the one we were really looking for here. And as you can see, it has like their signatures embossed in it. I couldn't find anything on it. I have a feeling this is vintage. Um, I don't really see... I see baseballs, but I don't really see softballs when we go to the parks. Um, so I don't know. I couldn't really find anything on it. So I'm going to do a little more research, but I mean, it was worth the $2 spending on the bag, you know, $2 and 19 cents. So we'll see maybe $15, maybe 20 bucks on it. We'll see how it goes. This plate right here, you saw the comps on this plate should be about a 15 to 20, maybe $20 plate. We'll see. It looked like I had an original tag on it, but it was $2 and 19 cents. I wouldn't have paid five dollars for it. If it was five five nineteen, I would not have picked this up um, because it's a plate and because the profit margin would be all gone. And right when I'm talking smack about anthropology, boom! I'm picking up more anthropology. It was only three dollars and thirty nine cents. Um, easily identifiable, but the bird. This was made in where did it say made in Japan, which typically it's all the most modern stuff is made in. Um, uh, China, so I'm thinking about twenty twenty five dollars for this guy here. And I couldn't really find this exact pattern, but I did find other similar comps. So, yeah, anthropology. I'm eating my words. I'm buying anthropology again. 
And then this is the other thing here, the smart. I really still don't think this has been used, but I'm going to list it as use just to be safe, keep cover myself, and um, make probably about 60 bucks. I'm guessing I'm probably going to do about $60. I'm probably going to ask 80 and get 60 for it is what my um, thought process is. So pretty cool. Yeah, that's, that's a home run. In, in my book, um, these two things are going to be over $100 of profit between two items, and they're easy to ship. Eh, it's a little bit big on the storage side, but I got plenty of space for that. Then a little miss. Oh, two things here. Miscellaneous bag of um, uh, ornaments. There was a vintage right here. Minnie Mouse ornament, which we've got to get out of there before it breaks. Made in Japan. It should be about $10 right there. The bag was $5.29. And then some other miscellaneous. I think these might be Hallmark. I'm not 100% sure. So kind of took a chance because there was another vintage another vintage Minnie Mouse piece as well too. So I haven't looked that one up, but we'll see. This could be like a, probably a $20 bag when it's said and done. I wish it was a little bit less than $5, but again, you gotta take what Google's gonna give you and try to turn it into a profit. Maybe that's not, it says Midwest on it. That's not Hallmark, but we'll see. We'll look it up either way. Uh, can of worms, <laughs> this is a hand puppet. It was uh, $4.19 for that guy. And just a little puppet of worms. Worms in there. Look at that. You guys see that? <laughs> Pretty cool. She's like a $10 piece. Not bad. Easy, easy to store, easy to ship. There. <laughs> Maybe when I start making merch, that'll be on my uh, t shirts or hats, whatever I decide to do. But that, oh, these shuttle shot glasses right here. Um, they're kind of cool, uh, got a unique design. It's by Joy Jolt, um, and I believe this is sold at uh, TG Maxx, primarily. I don't know where you would, I think, don't know where you would find it otherwise. That's why I've primarily seen it. But, should go for about $15 for this little set here of shot glasses. These, I will def I will be able to put, I do shot glasses inside poly, uh, padded mailers, and they do really well. As long as you get a good wrap on it with bubble wrap, um, throw in a bubble mailer, boom, send it on its way. But we'll probably wrap it like that. And make sure when you're wrapping it that you put bubble wrap in between the, don't wrap, wrap don't wrap them together like that. Cause they're going to clank. They will clank together. Even though they're wrapped, even if you wrap them tight, there will be a clanking and they could crack. So make sure when you're wrapping them that you have the cushion in between them. So they're not clanking like that. Uh, that'll prevent them from cracking on their you know, even no matter how well you, you wrap it, that could crack. So be careful. Um, and I do these, like I said, in bubble mailers. So either way, that's the haul for today. We're going to get all this up on eBay and hopefully sold really quickly. Start moving some items. we got to get our store going. Um, definitely, you know, a little slower. It's a little slower than normal. Uh, not like, you know, it's not dead like i hear a lot of people on ebay talking about you know their store is dead their store is gone we're we're or you know leaving ebay <laughs> um let me tell you something really quick uh, before i let you guys go here um i have done my own website and sold on my own website and let me tell you it's way more expensive you spend a lot more on advertising um you end up making a lot less yes you could potentially make more because you avoid a lot of the fees that eBay has out there. But it's really hard to get your name out there. Um, unless you're an influencer. Maybe if I happen to get enough followers here, I'll become an influencer myself and start my own website. <coughs> but getting traffic to your items is hard. eBay makes it easy. Uh, but then, you know, there's issues with eBay as well, too. Either way, guys, that's where I'm going to leave the video. And thank you guys for watching. Thank you to new subscribers. Appreciate the comments. Uh, thumbs up. We'll see you guys in the next one.